And you heard the story when I was on the streets of Brisbane and these two young evangelists came and, and uh, this one young evangelist wouldn't let me go. And, and uh, after following me around the block, I turned around to punch him because I was a martial arts instructor at Black Belt. And I was just going to come through his face. And I turned around so angry and then I saw the face of Jesus. And Jesus was looking at me. Here I am in sin drugs and alcohol and immorality and you name it i did it and eastern religion and i couldn't speak two sentences without swearing and i turn and i see the face of jesus and jesus was weeping jesus i saw the eyes of jesus i looked into the soul of jesus because the eyes are the window of the soul mm. that's what jesus said i looked into his eyes and he's broken hearted he's weeping over me and i knew that he's weeping over me because of my sin mm. I knew I broke his heart. He's weeping over me. That's a woe. Mm. He's weeping because I'm hurting myself. I'm bringing myself under a curse. I'm bringing myself under a judgment. He doesn't want it to happen. That's what's woe. Can you listen to what I'm saying? If you listen to this warning, you'll escape. That's the heart of Jesus and pronouncing a woe. Mm. The, the, while the, the prostitutes and the tax collectors were listening to Jesus' words... And escaping judgment, the Pharisees were so bound up in their self-righteous pride. When Jesus talked about sinners, they were looking at the Pharisee, they were looking at the tax collector and the prostitute and the publican, and they're looking at everybody else, and they're not even looking in the mirror. Yeah. That is the attitude of a Pharisee. That's right. When you hear the convictions, you hear the words of Christ, and conviction comes, you start looking around at everybody else and saying, that's for them. And you never ever look in the mirror and go, that's for me. Mm. <clears throat> that's why it's woe. Because unless you realize your sins, you can't confess and get set free. And in fact, the ones that Jesus pronounces the seven woes over wasn't the prostitutes. It wasn't the tax collectors. They were listening to his normal words. He's broken hearted over the religious people. Hallelujah. Why do you teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites, you shut the kingdom of heaven in men's faces, and you yourselves don't even enter in. Nor will you lead those to enter who are trying to. This is scary. You Pharisees, you scribes, you're shutting the gates of heaven in the faces of people. You're actually hindering people from entering into the kingdom of God. He says, not only that, you yourselves aren't entering. You think you're there. Mm. You think you're walking in the authority of the kingdom, but you're under self-deception mm. of a Pharisaic religious heart. You think you've arrived. You think you're doing good. You think you're without sin. That's why you can judge people. The thing is, you haven't even entered into the true power and authority of the kingdom of heaven. Right, yeah. And then what you're doing is you're stopping other people by entering in because of your teaching. And more than your teaching, your example. Mm. Because who knows, actions speak louder than words. Mm. That's what Jesus says. Okay, do what they're saying. <laughs> Don't do what they're doing. Because people are following their example. Mm. Their disciples would follow their example. He says, you will, nor will you let those enter who are trying to. In other words, not only did they shut the door in people's faces and hinder them from going in, they actively were stopping people from entering in who wanted to enter in. It's like they would, through their teaching, they would actually oppose people that were really entering in to the kingdom of heaven. They go, ah, false teaching. That's why they reject Jesus and they reject the followers of Jesus. And they call them a cult. And the reason I'm calling them a cult is because they're different to us. Mm. There's a, a verse 14 which is not found in the NIV, um, but it's found in the King James, and I'll read it for you because um, I have an awesome Bible that has footnotes. So even in the NIV, you can find it, but it's in the footnotes. Verse 14. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites, because you devour widows' houses, and for a show you make lengthy prayers. 
Therefore, you'll be punished more severely than the others. How about that? The first thing that they're doing, and this is what they were doing behind the scenes, is they were renting out properties. And as they're renting out properties, there's widows and orphans staying in the properties. And then what they would do is that they would uh, take exorbitant rent from them. And if they couldn't pay the rent because they were, they were broken financially, and then what they would do is they'd kick them out of the houses. Um, they were abusing widows and orphans. That's what it was. And uh, what they'd also then do is um, they would, the whole sexual immoral thing was going on where the, the religious leaders... Would sexually, they were like sexual predators, and they would prey upon these single women, these uh, these widows that have no husband. And uh, there's there's pastors are doing that today. Um, not every pastor, by the way, but you'll you'll hear stories where pastors are are preying on single women sexually. It's a very strong story we hear coming out of South Korea. I've heard so many stories that pastors have concubines and all this sort of stuff going on. But you'll find it in Australia as well. Mm. This is what they're doing. And not just sexually, but financially and doing other things. Um, there's some ministries and, and some of these extreme faith prosperity ministries. And really they're preying on the widows and they're preying on these women. And you know, if you give us $1,000, then God will really bless you. And here are these people that are struggling financially, widows and, and uh, single women, different things are going on, and they're vulnerable people, and, but the ministry is preying on vulnerable people to get more money out of them, saying, you know, you'll be blessed if you give $1,000. Now, who knows if you give by faith $1,000 because God asked you to, you'll get blessed. Do you know that? Put your hand up if you know that. Okay, if you don't have your hand up, you don't know. God will bless you if you give $1,000 into a ministry when He asks you to. That's right. yeah, yeah. If you're faithful to give tithes and offering, God will bless you. That's biblical. I can show you the scriptures. That's right. That's right. Yeah. But there's a difference that you are, you are manipulated into giving $1,000 by a man, and then you give because you want to get blessing. There's a motivation. I want to bless the kingdom of God, so I'm going to give an offering today. Or I want to get really, really blessed, so I'm going to give an offering today. Wrong motivation. But see, Pharisees are preying on people's weaknesses. That's what it's all about. Mm. The vulnerable. That's right here. And, and, and that goes on. They make lengthy prayers. And we know Jesus teaches a lot more about this. You know, the Pharisee, he's praying this amazing prayer about himself. Everybody look at me. I'm awesome. And I'm, you know, I'm righteous and I'm holy and I'm doing really good. And, and I'm going to pray. And you can listen to me pray a really long prayer because you know how awesome I am. But I'm not. Praise you, Lord, that I'm not like that publican over there. And people, you know, nothing wrong with praying a good prayer if it's coming spirit and truth and you're praying to the Lord because you're excited about God. That's, right, yeah. That's awesome. Make sure your heart's right. Why are you praying the long prayer? Mm. Some pr people can't pray at home when they're home alone, but when they're at church and people are listening, they can pray really long prayers. Mm. That's a problem. Who you are when you're home alone is who you really are. That's right. Yeah? Some people can really worship awesomely in front of people, and when they're home, they don't know how to praise God. Mm. They just get depressed and sit there all depressed. Mm. Jesus says their punishment will be more severe than the others. In the book of James, James, the brother of Jesus, he says, You should all not uh, desire or seek to become teachers, because don't you know, teachers come under a stricter judgment. How about that? Talks about judgment in the New Testament. It's not just Old Testament stuff. James, the little brother of Jesus, Mary and Joseph is his mum and dad. James says... You shouldn't all seek to be teachers because those that teach others will come under a greater judgment than the others. Why? Because when you read the Bible and then you have an attitude or an opinion about what's right and wrong and you go and you do it, um, if you've got a wrong opinion, you influence yourself and maybe some people by example around about you as a small circle of people that you are going to harm. When you've got an ungodly attitude and an ungodly action, but when you start teaching, you are influencing That's with right. deception a That's lot of right. people. Mm. 
In other words, you need to have the fear of God over what you teach other people. Because if you're teaching error, you're deceiving the church and God will hold you more accountable and His punishment on you will be greater. And that's New Testament after they're born again and saved. So there must be certain judgments that are released over born again believers. Yes. Okay, I'll let you meditate on what that would be. I'm not saying you lose your salvation, but I'll tell you what, if you go on really badly and you really wreck a lot of people, that might be on the cards. Verse 15. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You travel over land and sea to win a single convert. And when he becomes one, you make him twice as much a son of hell as you are. This is, this is Jesus preaching. Can you imagine if I'm saying, if I'm preaching to you guys and say, you know, woe to you people because you're going overseas and you're becoming a missionary and then you convert someone and you're making them twice the son of hell that you are. You know, like that's pretty strong words. Oh, yeah. Sure. Jesus is saying this. He's saying those people that move in a Pharisaic attitude and they follow the way of Pharisaic Christianity, that they are actually sons of hell. This is serious. Again, I'm not saying a Christian has lost their salvation, but it's like this. You're discipling people in the ways of darkness, not in the ways of light. Mm. The, that you're discipling people in the ways of hell, in not the way of heaven. This is what it's talking about here. This is, in other words, Jesus is saying, this is so serious. I want you to understand spiritually how serious this is. And then he uses this wording. To enforce it. So people that go, and by the way, um, there's, a, there's a thing called spiritual DNA. You won't find that in the Bible. But if you understand DNA. So, you know, um, if, you're, if the mums are Korean and the dads are Korean, there's Korean DNA there. And so the baby will be Korean. You know, you don't get an African-American baby from two Korean parents. <laughs> okay? If you did, then... The father would be very suspicious. <laughs> no, really. It's like, and, and so, um, you know, uh, I, I, I'm a European and my wife's Korean. And so we didn't get a Korean babies. We didn't get European babies. We get Eurasian ones because there's a DNA mix going on here. Okay. We need Jesus' DNA. You will, when you disciple people... When you disciple them and teach them the word, by your actions and by your words, you are investing into them a spiritual DNA. Mm. But you, you know, if you're, if you're not fo a true follower of Jesus, you cannot invest true Jesus DNA into people you disciple. Mm. Mm -hmm. yes, if you are walking in the ways of the Pharisees, you will start to build the DNA of the Pharisee into the people you disciple. That's why we call a lot of seminaries cemeteries. Mm. People go to a lot of seminaries to study the Word of God. And after they study seven, eight years of the Word of God, any true joy, any true faith, any true passion that had to be like Jesus has been utterly destroyed. And then they come out, it's like a Pharisee factory. Spiritual death, that's why we call them cemeteries. Be very careful the Bible colleges you go to. Be very careful when you go to study theology because some of those places are Pharisee factories. And then what happens is you get this system where people are pursuing title. They're pursuing the um, position. They're, they're pursuing the competition spirit. We want the church with more people. And in order to get more people, we'll do whatever we can to get more people in. And, we, and, and, and they, they pursue numbers. They pursue finances because it says Jesus talked about the Pharisees. They got really angry at Jesus when he talked about not worshipping mammon. And the Bible says the reason that they're angry at Jesus is because they love money. Mm. The whole thing, the love of money, covetousness. And so we've got these people, they're going into ministry not because they love Jesus and they want to serve Jesus and they want to reveal Jesus to people and they want to bless people in Jesus' name. No, no. They want to go into ministry because they want a job. That's right. Okay. Not really. 
They want a good income. And if they don't get a good income out of it, by the way, they're not going to go and serve that church. That's right. Because yeah. you don't give me enough money. It becomes about money. It becomes about income. Mm. It's not about, I love Jesus and I want to do all I can to reveal Jesus to other people. And I want to just bless people in Jesus' name. This is, this is um, the Pharisee thing. And this is what Jesus is now addressing here. Missionaries that go... And speakers go from nation to nation and they're turning people into little Pharisees. You know, as much as I have Jesus' DNA, I can pass it on to you. That's why I want to walk in humility and say, you know what? When I, I recognize in myself some of the Pharisee traits. I recognize that they're there. Humbly, I'm working through them. Um, and if you can walk in humility too, this is where the power of humility is, even though you're not 100% like Jesus yet, Humility itself is a Jesus DNA. You understand that? When you confess your sin, you confess your failure, uh, you, you say to people, I'm sorry that I just uh, haven't been a good example to you in this. I lost my temper when I shouldn't have lost my temper. I really ask you forgiveness. So I instantly remove the Pharisaic example and I bring in a Jesus example through humility. Jesus goes on, Woe to you blind guides. Just think about that. Jesus calls them blind gods. Verse 17, you blind fools. Verse 19, you are blind men. He says this several times. In other words, you are spiritually blind. You don't see the truth. You don't see God as God really is. You are like the blind people leading blind people who all end up in a ditch. Spiritual pride blinds us. In other words, you know what? You don't even know that you've got a Pharisee DNA in you. That's right, yeah. That's right. Because you justify yourself, you blame others, you don't see it. That's right. But you know who sees it? God. Amen. By the way, the devil sees it, he rejoices, he's, he's dancing around. It's like, wow, I've got another Pharisee in the church, that's awesome. Opening gates of hell, you know. Satan is very, very excited about the Pharisees. I want to make Satan upset. I want to make God excited, hey. But understand this. We need the grace of the Spirit of God to show us any of the Pharisaic attitudes or attributes that might be in us. To open our eyes. Are you willing for God to open your eyes? Are you willing to come and confess and repent of Pharisaic attitudes or activities? If you're willing, then you, you start asking Him to show you. I remember as a missionary years and years ago, we had a whole week of teaching. Something like three, four hours a day teaching. And the subject was Jesus versus the Pharisees. So we, we, had, a, we had like 20 hours on the Pharisees, you know, versus Jesus. They, the Jesus stuff as well. But the interesting thing is by the end of the week, man, I was getting so grieved at myself. Because the more they talked about the Pharisee, here I am, I'm a missionary, and I'm there's a there's a there's a Jesus DNA part of me, which is awesome, but there's a Pharisee DNA part, and I started seeing a Pharisee in me. By the end of the week, man, I was just going before God and I was repenting and saying, I want to put that Pharisee to death, you know. Let's just close our eyes. If you really want to become like Jesus, you've got to deal with this Pharisaic issue. Holy Spirit of God, we desperately need you. We desperately Amen. need you. Amen. Show us, Lord, wherever there might be the, the seeking of the praises of men. Wherever there might be the seeking of position or power. Forgive us for wherever there might be the seeking of titles. Lord, show us in our hearts if there's if we're being blind guides leading the blind. Lord, show us if there's any Pharisaic DNA in us. Show us, Lord, if we're on the outside looking like we're religious people, but on the inside that we're full of darkness. Show us our motivations, Lord, behind what we do. Why are we doing what we're doing? Open up our eyes. Open up our understanding. 
Reveal to us Jesus that we can become more like Him, Lord. Amen. 